Hi friends, hope you are fine. In this video, let us understand the stages of pathogenesis. Pathogenesis refers to a series of events from initiation to the development of a disease that is caused by a pathogen or disease causing organism. Now let us understand the stages of pathogenesis. Suppose this is a mucous membrane and this is the epithelial cell and this is the underlying tissue. Step 1 is the exposure to the pathogen. Contact with a potential pathogen is called as the exposure. So, pathogen comes in contact. There are different entry routes like all the openings, eyes, mouth, respiratory tract, then wounds or abrasions in skin, urogenital tract, gastrointestinal tract, all are openings through which pathogen can enter into the body system. The second step is adhesion. Adhesion is very important as innate defense mechanism of our body like the peristaltic movement of our gut, urination, sweating, tears, all these removes the pathogen from the system or washes out the pathogen from the system. So adhesion is a critical step as far as pathogen is concerned for causing a disease. Pathogen adheres to the cell by means of flagella, pili in the case of bacteria and this has many proteins or carbohydrate components like adhesins that helps to attach to the cell surface. This attachment is very critical as the innate defense system will flush out the pathogen if not attached to the cell. Or this pathogen has some proteins that binds to specific receptors on the host cell. The next step is invasion. Once attached, the pathogen enters and spreads into the tissues by means of invasion by producing certain proteins, certain toxins or by endocytosis and there are class of proteins called invasins that helps in entry of this pathogen from epithelial cell or the surface to the interior tissues. So this can be maybe by endocytosis, this plasma membrane invaginates by means of certain signals assisting the pathogen to enter into the cell or by secreting toxins or proteins or by binding to certain specific cell surface receptors that assist in movement of pathogen. Now pathogen has reached the tissue. Take the case of Helicobacter pylori. So contact with stomach acid keeps this mucin lining a spongy gel-like state so that this Helicobacter pylori cannot penetrate. So this bacterium releases ureas which neutralizes the stomach acid so that this mucin becomes liquefied so that bacteria can swim through it towards the epithelial cell. Once invaded, the next step is infection, causing infection. The first step in causing infection is colonization. Bacteria starts replicating very quickly and the number of bacteria increases, drastically increases within the tissue. Then it starts secreting toxins, endotoxins and exotoxins and enzymes like shiga toxin by shikala, then tetanus by clostridium tetani, botulinum by botulism, all are toxins that cause ultimately causes the destruction of cells and tissue damage. Once the tissue damage becomes severe, there, are, there will be some disease manifestation. So this infection may be local or systemic. Local means in the case of Streptococcus aureus uh, that causes hair follicle infection. There will be boils that is localized on specific regions on the head. So a urinary tract infection, it is also a type of local infection that is restricted to a localized region. When this infection spreads and spreads to different organs or multiple organs or throughout the system, then it is called a systemic. Take the case of pneumonia. Pneumonia starts uh, in the respiratory tract then moves to lungs. First, it is a localized infection. But once in the bloodstream, it can move throughout the body causing many disease symptoms and ultimately the disease become systemic, that infection becomes systemic, affecting multiple organs all or the entire body. In the case of viruses, chickenpox virus, all are examples of systemic infection that is affecting multiple organs or throughout the body. After a successful infection, for the pathogen to persist, it should be transmitted to the another host. Just like entry route, there are many exit routes for pathogen like urogenital tracts, respiratory tracts, all the openings, these are all exit routes 
through skin secretions and excretions, semen, vaginal secretion, tears, all are routes through which pathogen can move from a deceased host to the another one, a healthy individual. Some pathogen even release on insects to transmit the disease. So this is how pathogenesis works or mechanism of pathogenesis. Let me conclude starting with exposure. Host comes in contact with a potential pathogen. Then the pathogen adheres to the cell surface by means of adhesins or some cell surface receptors. Then it invades into the tissue, underlying tissue by means of invasins or by endocytosis or by releasing some proteins or toxins. Once inside the tissue, it replicates and produced in large number starts releasing toxins that can damage the tissues the tissue damage increases there will be manifestations of disease ultimately causing severe disease infection can be local or systemic local means the infection occurs in a localized area where systemic means it occurs or spreads to multiple organs or throughout the body and finally, for a pathogen to survive, to persist, it must transmit the disease to a healthy individual new host and transmission. Just like entry roads, there are many methods by which this pathogen can move out of a deceased host and causing disease to a healthy, healthy individual. Hope you understand the mechanism and stages of pathogenesis. I will be leaving the link of our immunology videos here. Take care, stay blessed. Thank you so much. You are with biologyexcelsfor.com.